gonna keep this. I'm gonna talk about myself on this motherfucker. Like, look like I got an obsession with licking my lips. <laughs> this shit be happening. Keep the gloss on that. Got a hot saliva count. Huh? So we finally here. Yeah, Brosky. Remember, that's on your neck. Yeah, I keep forgetting, honestly. I keep going for it. Like, what the fuck is on my neck? Okay. Yeah, I'm used to it. All right. Three, two, one. Voila. Oh. Beautiful people, more life, more blessings. We are finally here, my brother. Finally made it. Do it for the love, episode one. If you watch sitcoms and anything like that, this is like our friend's pilot episode. Yeah. You know, the world gets to see us for the first time, yeah. get to check us out, understand what we've been working on behind the scenes. You know, we here, man, do it for the love. Me and Sel's first time shooting a show together, yes. our podcast. But, you know, we want to give y'all through how we're going to plan to run the show in the future as time goes. So this is what we like to call Check the Temperature. Check the Temperature. You know, how you been today, my brother? You know, how you feeling? It's funny because, you know, I've been so excited to get to this point. Right. And today I just felt like I woke up and had a lot of things that was against me that was making me... Okay. Not that I didn't want to do the show, but right. it, I felt like it was going to be hurdles. Gotcha. You know, waking up with a headache. Uh, having a whole bunch of other stuff to do prior to shooting, you Thanks. know, just trying to make it all work. But, you know, power through. We here. I'm excited. Blessed to be here, man. Blessed to have you as a co co-host, partner. Brother. Absolutely. And do it for the love, man. That's where we celebrate and the hustle, the passion, and the love, man. This this is about people who grind 24/7. That just have a passion that's unmatched for what they do and what they want to put out to the community. So we want to highlight you guys on this show. But how you feeling? Checking your temperature. Man, I feel great, brother. Today was my first time being able to work remote. So I felt the opposite of how I felt last week. You know, yeah. when we were supposed to shoot, get together, do our photo shoot, get ready for the night. Yeah. But I felt like you felt today. We chose not to push through last week, but it's a blessing that we did this week. Yeah. I'm ready to go, man. The world been waiting for us, yeah. man. Annapolis has been waiting for us. Yeah. And we're trying to spread this love throughout all the cities, everybody in the regions, the DMV. Man, we have big plans to touch as many different industries as many different entities, no matter what your passion is, what you believe in, what you do. So we want to get into what actually, what Do It For The Love is going to be about. The purpose of this show, who we intend to have on as guests, how we intend to go against, you know, go at you with dialogue and get into the, pretty much the gist of why you do what you do, who you are, where you started, where you're trying to take it, and what you're trying to get accomplished with your passion. And as you saw how we started every show, is going to start out with checking your temperature. Got to find out how Buddy's doing this week, how he doing today. You Thanks. know, same for me. Um, and then we're going to roll straight into this kickoff convo. Uh, so, so what's the first topic that we wanted to discuss? So topic number one, being that we just told you that the episode, the show, is called Do It For The Love. So the goal is to get different people on from different entities. I don't care if you have... A burial, a yeah. restaurant, if you bury people for a living, if you're a mortician. I want all types of people from all walks of life, not just musicians, not just rappers, the things that you would typically expect from us as young black men or entertainers, period. We want them people too, don't get me wrong, we want everybody. But we really want the people that nine or fivers, people that started businesses after working for a business for 20 years and getting to learn it. We want people that really care about what they do for a living. So topic number one tonight is about what is the driving factor for you to say you love what you do? How far are you willing to take it for your passion job, for your passion project, for what you do on a day-to-day -day basis? How far are you willing to go to prove your love for it to yourself or to the people that you're trying to show that you're worth something or prove something to? One of the best examples, I believe we had a discussion about this last night, sports, you know? Facts. Um, a lot of sports players are super dedicated to what they do. And, you know, for a lot of you youngsters out there, whether you're playing football, basketball, any sport, if you want to make it to that next level, whether that's college or the pros, you got to have a certain mindset. You got to have a certain dedication and work ethic. And how better to know how to get there in different steps 
then having some of the people that we're going to have on the show be able to tell you their stories, tell you the paths and her, you know, different obstacles that they went through. And that's what Do It For The Love is about. Asking the, the, the interviewee, what, why do you do it? Why do you love what you do? And is it all about money or is it all about the passion? Or is it both? You know, what's some of the hidden gems that you have in your hustle that you can teach people in your field that they may not know that'll further them and push them with different resources or whatever it might be. So that's what Do It For The Love is all about. All about. You know, what better way to tell the people, you know, about us? You know, I think this is a great time to get into our origin stories and give them a little bit of background Thanks. about us and how we do it for the love. So why not kick it off right now, buddy? You know, how you want to do it? I'll go first. So, I mean, it is about to be Bud Vember. Bud Vember. You know, and that's <laughs> for anybody who don't know what Bud Vember is. If, if this is your first time meeting me, my birthday is November 28th. I'm a proud Sagittarius. I think we are the strongest, the best, the brightest, the most beautiful people in the world. But that's just how I feel about us. So I took the whole month of November, and I call it Bud-vember. But pretty much, that's an intro to show you who I'm about. I love celebrating life. I'm a person that cares about family. I care about sports. I care about music. And when I say I care about these things, it's a driving force behind a lot of the things that I do. I feel like music is the universal language. I'm all about unification and bringing people together by any means necessary. So who I am is a person that loves to connect people, bring people together, and work towards something, you know, because I feel like it's a lot of things to be accomplished in this world, and together we can accomplish them, but you need somebody behind you to push you to the final steps of any goals you're trying to accomplish. Who hey, are you? Who am I? My name is Karma Cell Brown. A lot of you viewers know me as Cell Spitfire, multi-talented artist, um, used to rap. That's how I got the name, Cell Spitfire. That's gone and passed behind me, but like Buddy, I still have a love and a passion for music, listen to music on a daily basis. But in my career life, you know, I went to school for graphic design. I've been drawing since I've been six years old. Artiste. Artiste. And went from drawing on paper to creating t-shirts. Shout out to Devin Randall. We started out doing t-shirts in uh, middle school, selling them for $10, and even though they was worth way more than that. You know, and I ended up going to the Art Institute of Atlanta, Got my graphic design degree, and uh, as of late, I've been doing murals for the last three or four years since the pandemic. Um, you know, check out my website, www.selfspitfire.com, to get more in-depth on my portfolio and stuff like that. But ultimately, I'm an artist. I'm passionate about my community. Um, in my spare time, I like to work with a lot of nonprofits and uh, schools and uh, really give a lot of kids motivation, inspiration, and insight into what I do. I get a lot of kids that when they meet me and see I'm an artist, they be like, man, artists don't make no money, or how do you make right, money? Right, and right. when I break down some of the things I've done, they're amazed. And it's always good for me to see people following my path. So that's, that's who I am, an artist, you know, creative director. I rock with Tunnel Vision. You know, if you, you heard about Tunnel Vision, uh, clothing Shout line. Shout out to Kyle, man. Towson Tiger, Brad, baby. Right. We specialize in the sports uniforms. So some of these dope uniforms that you see around the county, the country, celebrity game uniforms. Tunnel Vision is behind that, and uh, I'm one of the lead designers there. So, you know, that's just a little bit about me, but uh, I'm going to try to bring an artful eye, uh, artful expression, and, uh, you know, just a, a real proud viewpoint to the show. So that's who I am. Absolutely. So you want to do the second one? I go. You can go and start off with what? What is it that you do? What's your passion? What's your love? Like, I know you just said a lot of it about the art, but you could get a little more into, like, what it is about that. So, I mean, naturally, art just, just comes natural to me, right. right? So, like I said, I've been painting and drawing since I've been six. But the toughest thing about my career that I've finally got a grip of is my purpose. Gotcha. Like, um, and, you know, it's been a little disappointing to finally get to this point in my mid-30s. And it's a lot of resources and things about art that I wish I would have known in my early 20s or my early teens because I feel like my path would have been a lot different. Um, so now my passion is to really, like I said, deal with schools, different organizations, even adults, some adults that are getting out of jail, trying to get that rehabilitation back into the normal world. Right. And I teach them that, you know, it's not over for you. Like you don't got to have a trade to do artwork or murals. So how can I bring you along in my world and show you the ropes? And if you decide to venture off, you know, it's, it's plenty of money out here for everybody. So that's what I do. I like to not only do the artwork but provide others with a means to make money as well. Gotcha. Um, for myself, what I do is I'm an event host. 
that is my passion job. Um, I'm also a father of an autistic child. So I'm an advocate for special needs families all across the board, not just autism. That uh, spectrum is a wide variety of individuals and people. So I try my best to be an advocate for people that feel voiceless, for people that feel like they don't have anybody to speak for them, especially for the kids. My son's nonverbal. He's 16, be 17 next year. So it's a journey, my brother. As you know, I've, we've grown, we grew up together, but me and you've grown pro, close mm -hmm. a lot in this last, what, since February when we were supposed to premiere the show, mm -hmm. originally for Valentine's Day, yeah. up until this point to where we're here. So you know how tough that journey can be, but how passionate I am about it and the little right. gems that come out doing it. Um, when it comes to event hosting, I graduated from Towson University, communications degree. So I've always been naturally a communicator. Um, I always say if I could have went back to school, I would have been a judge. Something that, you know, use this gift of gab and yeah. try to get myself into something to challenge myself a little more. But I feel like everything happens in a timetable for a reason. And being that, like, I'm here now actually hosting for money and being paid to do what I love to do. Mm -hmm. You know me, I've been throwing parties for years for yeah. free. I just want people to come up, pull now, up. Now you're the life of the party. Yeah, you feel me? The, and, uh, the pulse of the party. And people coming at me for birthday parties, weddings, anniversaries, all age groups. I did a Sweet 16 and I did a 76 year birthday party in the same month. Mm -hmm. Like the different ranges of people that I'm touching. I feel like I'm walking in my purpose. As you said, um, I just got a promotion at the University of Maryland Dental School working in student affairs and just um, being there for six years, but now I'm being in this position. I've always had a knack for just kids individuals but working with young adults that's in their mid-20s already got a bachelor's taking it to the next level I just feel like all of my hosting and what I'm doing is coming in one just awesome. big group and it's like becoming like a production company mm -hmm. within myself like the production company of Eric or Buddy or D-Mass Pop or any of my aliases that I'm rocking with so it, uh, it just feels good to do that and be able to be in this position and now inspire people Mm -hmm. to be an artist, to be a host, and multitask. Because mm -hmm. this podcast is a separate entity from that, but it's still a part of our, our umbrella. Yeah. So I'm loving it. So with the who, you know, we went through the who, the mm -hmm. what. For the when, I think we should hit them with, when did you know that hosting was your calling and your purpose? Like, what was that that time frame for you where you know, like, th this is it? This yeah. Is what I need to do. I would say for me personally, probably... The first family day, mm -hmm. the first family day I did. At that point, they were already at like the fourth or fifth annual what Diva. Is, what is family day? Annapolis Family Day mm -hmm. is a celebration. It happens normally at the end of July in Annapolis, Maryland, where we're both from. And our brother Troy Stansbury and the Annapolis LOC puts together this nonprofit. It's free. You got food vendors coming from all over the place, et cetera, et cetera. Bands, go-go, R&B artists, rappers from all over the place, et cetera, et cetera. Thousands of people, year after year. I happened to become the host the fifth year in. So it was after that when people talking to me, coming up to me afterwards, like, man, you need to do this more often, man. You're going to be back next year, so on and so forth. A month after that, I got booked for my first birthday party, and this, the wheel ain't stopped turning since. So I feel like that would be like when I know like this hosting thing is what I should do. As you know, I had a podcast before. Shout out to my unbiased podcast brothers, Jones, Chef. 5K made, but you know, everybody's busy in their life, so we went separate ways, which led us to here. So I feel like that's when I just knew that this is what I was supposed to be doing. Regardless, I still got my nine to five, I still hustle, but this is it. Like, this is my passion project. So for me, uh, I felt like I always knew that art was a part of my life. And right. like, well, even when I was fully into music, I was still doing the artwork behind a lot of the albums or posters or shows. Um, but I really didn't really get my purpose until around the pandemic, um, <clears throat> you know, linking up with different artists in the city and then us actually advocating behind the, the Black Lives Matter movement right. and being Definitely. able to help contribute to a painting of Breonna Taylor and George Floyd, Major. which, I mean, blew up, exploded my career right. in so many ways. And not only did it blow up my career, but it, it put that, that battery on my back to continue on. So um, I think that when I did the second Breonna Taylor project in Louisville, and I remember at one moment when it just hit me, I looked up, it was a helicopter that had heard about the uh, mural getting right, done. Right, right, right. 
we was afraid that they was going to unveil it on the news before we unveiled this is before it to the, the family. Got you, got you. Um, but I remember when we unveiled it to look up, still see the helicopter, all of Breonna Taylor's family members and her mother immediately shed a tear of so many emotions. I don't even think it was a, a just tears of joy, but tears right. of hurt, pain. I felt that. Like, right. But that was when I saw my purpose. I was like, I want to continue I'm to do this. Lives, um, and and I, I don't know if people knew, but two days after we left from Louisville, you know, we got so much joy from completing the project to then get an alert that the court got vandalized, you know, by some of the community residents who didn't want the mural there, you know? So then that just really magnified my purpose. I'm like, even through tough situations right. like that, Try to stop it's me. purposeful, you know? Right. So, I mean, I haven't done, I haven't been doing too many more memorial paintings or things related to Black Lives Matter, but more inspirational messages, right. um, more looking into the future or or shedding a light on history, like with the Cars Beach mural. So what you did in Atlanta yeah. with the uh, young ladies that's been like, um, I forgot, I'm missing the word for, but the mural that you did down in Atlanta in the underground yeah. about the young abused ladies and yep. young yeah, women. Yeah, it's an anti-sex trafficking exhibit. That's the word. It was Absolutely. at the, at the um, underground mall in Atlanta. Shout out to Bianca Moto for curating such a beautiful event, but events like that as well. It's like sitting in a room full of survivors that's been through traumatic experiences and being able to just provide artwork to, to give you not only a sense of healing, um, so you can look back on your situation and to give schooling and just uh, understand it to the people that may not know about sex trafficking. And then to do it in Atlanta, which from what I understand is the number one city in America for sex trafficking and kidnappings and disappearances. So. You know, it was it, it's it's crazy, man. You know, I even think that <laughs> am I stepping on the toes of people right, who right, do right, sex right, trafficking? Right. It's a dangerous, no, it's absolutely. a dangerous world. But that leads us to another part about doing it for the love. Like, are you willing to lose your life behind what you love doing? Absolutely. Or in sports, well, are you willing to be injured and you know sit out for a year? Like, how right. much do you really love what you're willing to do? And for me personally, I'm willing to die by what I do or any project that I stand by. Yeah, I feel like when it comes to that, I feel <laughs> like I'm willing to go to whatever level I have to go to to survive. And when I think about that, I don't want to survive or live without doing what I love and being around the people I love. Mm -hmm. So with that being said, you know me, I'm Mr. Uh, Nonviolent, Mr. Peaceful. I don't want to think about about dying about what I love to do, but if it came down to it, then I'm going to do what I have to do because I'm not going to be silenced. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to have anybody telling me that I can't put this positive message out here every day. I don't care about what you say. Like when you say people try to destroy the mural or mess up what y'all put the time into, they want you to quit. And I feel like that's a tr perfect segue into telling people that this, what we just did, is exactly what we're looking for from guests. We want people that are passionate about what they do for a living, regardless. You don't have to own a company, but if you want to own a company and you've been putting in them hours, you've been putting in that work, come holler at us. Talk to us. It's going to be a whole way that we're going to, you know, sell and tell you about it, but we want guests. We want people that care about their job, their passion projects. Whether it's a family, you could be a family person, you could be a full-time mom, that's a job. I know people that do the special needs programs and stuff, that's an everyday project, that's a job. So that also is going to lead, I actually want you to touch on uh, pretty much more so if there's anything more about guests that you would want from them or what you think they should know about coming before coming to us or stepping forward about well, being on here. I would like guests to know that, you know, you don't have to just be interviewed. We have a segment that we will highlight different businesses and eat. Even restaurants, we're looking at going into restaurants, trying out food, giving a, a, a tasteful and respectful uh, review of your business and, you know, even letting you come on and show us what it's about. Um, and I know that, you know, even when we've been giving teasers to the show, a lot of people were reaching out, giving inquiries. Um, we just ask that if you do feel like you fit for this show, that when you send an inquiry, you just let us know all about you. We want to really be able to dig deep. Pause and you know, Cam and Mace watch. Right, you gotta really just dig deep and see what you about and how you plan on furthering what you're doing and spreading that back to the community. Facts, and um, we're gonna continue. This would also be a segment part for our guests. So what we call this is rapid fire questions. You know about that fire. So listen here, yeah. So y'all got to know us on a real personal right. level, right? Um, during this rapid fire section of the show, we're gonna do. I said about 10 to 15 questions, but in this one, we're going to do 10. Rapid five, five, five questions back and forth to each other. We don't know what each other's questions are, but 
random just to get to know each other outside of what we just told y'all. So you want me to kick it off? Go for it. Are we going to do back and forth or you want to do five and five straight? Uh, let's go back and forth. Right, let's go back and forth. Oh, you want to flip a coin for it? No, I ain't got no coin. No yeah. All right, back. Go. Back and forth. We're going to bring that into it next time. Let's go. All right, first question. Dinner with Jay-Z or are you taking the money? And why? Oh, wow. I'm going to say dinner with Jay-Z, and this is why. I feel like being that he's also, and this is going to sound corny low-key, Sagittarius like myself, I feel like I can have a better conversation with him and understand how to get in my way. Because I watched the interview he did the other day and he's still going to say, listen to my albums if you want to understand. Like, he said take the money, but I'd rather have that moment to see if I could sit in that room and make an impression on a person that could change my life if I needed it, or I just had that moment. Sometimes that could be worth more than money, because if I believe in myself, I'm going to get to the bag regardless. Gotcha. All right, your first one. Your favorite rapper? Nas. Nice. Nice. Nasir Jones, man. Right, wow. My guy. So I always loved listening to music as a kid, but I remember really like wanting to buy a CD and open it up and read the lyrics when gotcha. I heard If I Rule the World. Like I was listening to music prior to that, but that really made me want to buy a CD and yeah. I've been listening to Nas ever since. Yeah, now his run that he's been on. Shout out to Nas and Headboy, man. It's incredible. Three year run, six albums. Phenomenal. Keep it going, brother. Um, all right, I'll go with the second question since you went first. Yeah. Your favorite painter or artist, however you want to describe that? Uh, my favorite artist is Chuck Styles, okay. uh, artist from Philly. Uh, one thing I like about his artwork is he does a lot of mashup artwork where he'll take one Let's Explain that to the non-artists of the world. So a mashup concept is where somebody takes two subjects and you pull them together to make one painting. So one of my dopest paintings that's in my collection at my house from Chuck Styles is a concept where he took the Outkast cover, I can't remember which album, with the black and white stars you know, with the black and white flag, I'm sorry, in the background. Oh, that's um, that's that Stankonia? Stankonia album, right? I think it might so be Stankonia. If you visualize the Stankonia album cover with Big Boy and Andre in front of the black and white American flag, he took that concept, but he replaced Andre and Big Boy with Martin and Malcolm. Okay. And But they that's still hard. doing the same poses. They just got on suits, and it's that whole concept. So Chuck Styles, shout out to him, man. Y'all need to check out his work. He represents Philadelphia. He also designed the cover of Madden last year. So the boy been putting in work. Oh, man. Shout out to you. He designed the set for Martin when they did the reunion episode. Man, the boy, every time, he's just one of those artists. It's really hard to inspire me, um, but he definitely has that effect on me. When I see his work, well, not only do I, I'm puzzled and amazed at the artwork and how he came up with the concept, but just amazed at how he continues to progress and get bigger jobs more and more. Out. So that's... Shout out to Chuck. Gotcha. And just to let y'all know, rapid fire question when you're a guest gonna be a lot faster than this, but since we are about the love, we just share love until what we picking tonight because we care about all of our choices. All right, number two. You about to get ratchet. Look at the see the shit in your eyes. Who more vulnerable? Which women are more vulnerable? At a funeral or at a wedding since she hosts? <laughs> uh, more vulnerable for sure, I'm gonna say at a funeral. More vulnerable Don't because. <laughs> yeah, 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 man. Shout out to the people getting married and to the people getting buried, man. We, you know, we care about you all. Um, all right, so question number <laughs> question number three. You want to go first? No, oh, it's back on me? All right, bet. All right, bam. Now I'm going to get a little ratchet with you. More excited to take a good shit or a good shower? Or combination? <laughs> no, I definitely can't do a combination. Uh, I'm not like the back, like, like right there. It's not like a good shit, man. You, yeah. you can get a lot of stress off that way. I agree 100% of the way. 100% of the way. I know a nigga from Baltimore named BL. <laughs> Shout out to BL. He, he would be making a beat, and if it wasn't something he would like, it was two things he had to do smoke a fug, which you know is a cigarette in Baltimore, right. and go take a shit. If he did them two things, he came out and gave us the hottest beat that week, bro. <laughs> you got to get it out somewhere, somehow, man. You know, make that heat. That. All right, next one. One place. You would want to go with your parents before you die. Whew, that's a good question. Um, being that my father don't like to fly, my mother don't want to know nothing but Vegas, a live casino. I would say I would love to take them somewhere like South Africa, or like not South Africa, like you know, like Egypt. 
Something that they would never do in their life. And I don't even know how long it could last in a something place like that. Yeah, something that I've read is going to be an experience. Like, we've done the Disney Worlds and we've done all of like the right. close drive stuff, but like something where it's really an experience. And they, and they don't really like to do nothing. So it ain't like I could build something around their habits or their hobbies. If we go to a casino, that's what she want to do the entire time. If you take him to uh, anywhere where he can go lock himself in a room and not have to deal with human beings, that's what he's going to do. So I'd just rather take them somewhere passionate, somewhere positive, somewhere dope. Good choice. Um, all right, bam. Next to you. All right, so I, I'm going to just go at it. Drain champs are my expert opinion. See, buddy asked me this because he know I'm watching these joints every day. Yeah, he's been doing his podcast research like a mom. Like, I'm going to be honest. It's hard for me to watch myself. So I watch every, like, you know, and spur in the moment type stuff, but I do my best. I love my expert opinion. Shout out to Mad Popper and crew. Um, but Drink Champs got me in a chokehold right now. Right? All right. I love the concept of starting out, you know, easing into the questions and then as the drinks pick up now, you know, the answers get more raw. Right, right, right. It just, it, it could go anywhere. It's a roller coaster ride of a show where I feel like my expert opinion is kind of straightforward. Um, so definitely drink chance all day. Shout out to Noy. Gotcha. Uh, right. One talent you wish you had. Oh, man. I wish I naturally was like an instrumentalist. I wish I could play mad every like instrument. Also, like Stevie Wonder type of shit, like Prince. I wish I could play every instrument. If you broke out a harmonica in this motherfucker right now, <laughs> I could play any beat that's out in hip hop. If you broke out a guitar, a drum set. I just love, I love music. So I wish I could like illustrate it in other ways besides just singing or rapping and writing. You know, you could learn the talent. I could go get a, you know, somebody to teach me, but I wish I naturally just like progressed and did that as a younger person. Gotcha. Um, on to you. The Super Bowl, because I know you love football, or a mirror ribbon cutting of something that you just produce yourself? I'm going to pick a mirror ribbon cutting, but I think the only way I would choose something else other than that, and that's the dumb uh, shit. Yeah, see, yeah. that's a sign of what I'm going to say. That's a ghost of Adidas, man. <laughs> Give me your shit back. Stop playing. <laughs> so, yeah, I would rather pick a mural, but I would only pick the Super Bowl with my team was in it. I'm, 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 because I, I didn't skip okay. a mural ribbon cutting once out of the 25 murals I've done. Can I ask what that was for? Uh, I can't even remember, but okay. I know it was something that was done. Wasn't the Super Bowl, though? No, it wasn't the Super Bowl. <laughs> it was right, something bro. that was super important, like going out of town or something right, to you. do another job. I got you. Got you. Uh, right, this the last, is this the last question? You got one more after this? I, I got two, but if you got, oh, you got one. got two? All right, I got, I got have two more. My uh, weirdest thing a woman said to you on a date or in the bedroom? The weirdest thing a woman ever said to me on a date or in the bedroom with me being rapid and thinking <laughs> fast, I'm going to say, I guess something like, why aren't you, why don't you get back with your baby moms? I'm like, damn, you don't want this night to go nowhere. You asking, you asking why I ain't going back? Like, all right, I don't know what you want. I don't know if you want me to, if that's a trick, a trick question. I just thought that was a little left up, but you know me, I'm also like straightforward, so I kind of liked it at the same time. <laughs> but I also thought, just me just being quick, not trying to super like go deep into thought. That's just the first thing I thought of. Gotcha. All right. Uh, this could be a simple one, but this is my last one I had. Best crab cake in Maryland? My grandfather's. Oh, man. Black people love, black people love saying they old kitchen. Shout out my grandfather, Pie Plate, man. He, his story is crazy, bro, because... He always tell me about how growing up in his days, like if you was a man and you chose home ec in school, they called you gay. But he said he loved food so oh, much man. that I can see it. He he didn't care about the stereotypes. Like right. he's like, I'm gonna go in there, I'm gonna cook, and yo, he can make some of the best stuff from scratch. And he got some of the craziest skills with with chef and so on. My grandfather crab cakes off the chain. Right. Hey, listen, don't be afraid. When I say do it for the love, if you a chef, culinary art school, we want you. Bring a plate. Oh, yeah, bring a play with you too. Yeah, yeah. we like to right eat here. around here for sure. But yeah, man, shout out to anybody that do what they do for the love. I don't care if it's something that's looked at as a woman job. It's 2023. If you love to do something, chase it, follow the door. My last question for you. Let's go. Let me see how quick you can answer this one. Let's go. If you had to compare yourself to one celebrity of the opposite race, who would it be? One celebrity of the opposite <laughs> race. You know, you know, I love the whites. You know, <laughs> my folks, you know, I love everybody. Um, once person of the opposite race, I'm gonna have to say Brad Pitt. 
Okay. I say, man, I was going to say Leo, but I'm not really like an environmentalist. I'm telling you, and I'm going to tell you why. I've always watched Brad pick a rear, and he's always been like the laid back dude, but he's always in the mix. He could chill with the dudes that's looking like the new Rat Pack with Matt Damon and George Clooney and them. Or I can go and adopt kids with my wife and go and just turn into like the dad guy. Or I could turn back into the production person, movie star person, winning his first Oscar. You know what I mean? I love movies. So I feel like when I think of that, that's a good question. I like that. I'm like, I got some shit for you coming soon. But yeah, you know, man, that is rapid fire questions. So when we have a guest on, it'll be a little bit quicker. If they have something they want to elaborate on, we have another segment that will follow this one called Spin the Block. And that would be the perfect time to go back into that. So like how we were describing a little things more in depth, how he got into his artists a little more. When we have a Spin the Block moment with a guest, if it was a rapid fire question where they really, really wanted to get to something, but we just wanted to keep it moving, we'll Spin the Block and get back to it. And they can drop as many gems as they want to about it. Yeah, so I definitely want to get into this next segment here called Love to Not Love. Okay. Now. Hear that out. Love to not love. And why is it love to not love? Because then typically when you have somebody that you may not like or you may not necessarily approve what they do, we might say we hate them. Well, I love to hate them. Yeah. Yeah. But in this show, since this is door for the love, right. me and Buddy made a promise that we won't use the word hate on this show. Yes. If you are guest to say the word hate, it's going to be bleeped out. And if we say it, it's going to be bleeped out. Man. So we love to not love. So in this segment, we're going to pretty much talk about somebody, something, business, whatever, that we maybe love to not love. And why? Should I kick it off? or You, you chose it. I was going to go with something different. But when I thought about it, I feel like my angle might be a little different than yours. So I feel like we can agree on I had to, to get, love to I not I had to, to really this. like dig deep on this, this subject because I've been trying to ignore it so hard. But Christian, Rock, and Blueface. Man, like two people that I wasn't necessarily watching, one of the two I didn't know of that just popped up out of nowhere and I constantly see them every day. So I had to really dig deep and do my research and see the timeline of how we got to this point where we at now where it started from, right? Let's do it. Started out with Blueface and Rock, uh, Christian Rock meeting at the start of the pandemic. He launched his OnlyFans reality show called Blue Girls Club. Christian Rock was one of the contestants, of course. Um, they was in the mansion for a month. Um, they had to compete for his love. Rock was obviously the instant standout. While she was on the show, she got into a fight with the mother of Blueface's child. And before we even moved, that's already a red flag. You know, we've been talking about red flags. Somebody getting into a fight with your mother, that should already just give you enough ammo to cut it off, right? But these two dummies... Continue. <laughs> Rock gets sele selected as the winner of Blue Face competition, and she was signed to his record label. So that happened in 2020. Moving up, moving two years past into 2022, Blue Face called out Christian for allegedly stealing his car. Now we're getting more and more toxic as time goes on. Two years in, y'all stealing each other's cars, fighting each other's parents. Then Very moved, hostile. And that's in February. Right. May 2022, Christian Rock allegedly hits Blueface mom. Now, now we back and beefing with the mom again. At what point, you as a son, do you have respect for your own mother or any family member to where you're not going to let your spouse even get that toxic? Yeah, was this before or after the actual footage of them fighting the sister? And the when husband? they was fighting downtown Baltimore? No, when they actually was in California fighting the sister and the husband and the mother. and Like, it's on footage. I'm going to have to go back and tell <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It's a lot in this timeline, but I'm going to let August you rock. August 2020. That happened in May 2022. August 2022, Christian Rocks gets arrested after punching Blueface. More and more toxicity, right? October 2022, Christian Rock says Blueface hit her and then takes back the claim a day later. So, I mean, just listen to this. We already six incidents in within a two year time span. We're not talking about small incidents. They ain't We're even talking pop about pop physical yet. abuse, <laughs> verbal abuse, parental abuse. Like, come on, man. The trailer drops in October next for Blueface and Christian Rock reality show. I already knew it was going to turn up after that. You give somebody a reality show, if they already acting a fool. Is this on WeTV? Yeah. One of them? Okay. One of them wild networks. Gotcha. The 
the trailer dropped. Now everybody, you know, I guess fiending and wanting the toxicity, right? At this point, they've built a fan base that's popular. Now we're moving into media. 2023, the start of this year. Chris John Rock announced pregnancy and fallout. So y'all go three years, all of this toxic shit that you would think would have broke up a relationship. Right. And now you go from just small arguments to now Blueface don't want your ass no more. Chris John Rock, come on, man. You from you from Maryland. <laughs> you gotta do better. You making us look bad, man. You can't let these West Coast dudes do you like this. I mean, he's literally running over top of you. Do you want to comment before I go on? Uh, it's only a couple more instances. I'm gonna let you rock. I'm gonna let you rock, and then I'm, I'm gonna give my take on it. Why yeah. I love to not love Chris John. All right. So Blue now, what, look, catching up. She's pregnant now. In the beginning of 2023, Chris John Rock and Blueface drop a new song called Lit. We think they broken up. Now they showing even more toxicity going back and forth from fake breakups to dropping hits together. Not hits, but dropping songs. It's hits in their world. Yeah, hits. Yeah, them type of <laughs> hits. Um, and then lastly, Blueface and Christian Rock get married in a music video for Dear Rock. And then fast forward to now, Christian Rock welcomes their new baby boy, Christian Jesus Malone. And it's all types of crazy shit going on with the baby. I done seen the baby in the club with headphones on. Passed around amongst a whole bunch of adults. Man, I feel sorry for the baby. I feel sorry for Christian Rock. And I'm tired of them, man. I, I love to hate. I love to not love them. Yeah, it's all good. It's the first, it's the first episode. You know, hate gonna slip out every now and then. <laughs> um, my take on them is a little different. I feel like y'all know me. For those who do know me, that's gonna be our viewers. For those who don't know me, I'm very much an optimistic. Um, when I first seen them, I don't watch reality TV. So it will pop up. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to sit here and act like Blueface is the worst rapper in the world or the best rapper in the world. He got some tunes. He got some joints that's okay to me. Christian music I ain't really rocking with, but it is what it is. She's passionate about what she's doing. She got a crowd and a fan base. If you could pack out arenas, small venues of any sort and get people to buy your music, then you're doing something good. And to me, you win it. So I, ain't even, I don't have to like it. But when I talk about them, just to keep it quick, I just don't like pushing that type of energy always just, and you can be, honestly, at the end of the day, you can be who you want to be and show that every day on social media as she do. Within the last 10 days, she says that they are for everything, that she's now in jail with Casa and them, where the first thing she did when she got in jail said, fuck Blueface, and get everybody to scream it. It's a love-hate thing there that I don't see it ending in a positive way, but I'm always hoping, pray for the best. So I love to not love the unpredictability of either the realism or the game that they're playing. Because at the end of the day, we only see these people for glimpses. I have no idea what they're really like and what they life really like. But I know these charges they be catching is real. Yeah. And I know all of the stuff that they keep getting into is real. And they really have a baby and all of that stuff. So, you know, I love to not love black love, not looking like they in love, <laughs> if that makes sense to y'all. And that is what love to not love is. It's a lot of other ways to describe it, but it's pretty much our way of kind of poking fun, but at the same time, maybe dropping some truth to things that we care not to see as much as we see it. Whether it's on the timeline, because Instagram has switched the game up. It ain't about just what you follow no more. They'll throw whatever they want at you, and you'll see it all day. And sometimes it actually works, and I follow new things. And sometimes it's stuff that you don't want to see. So going off that, we have a segment that I'm going to let my brother Sel introduce who we're giving it to, but it's something that I've done on Facebook and Instagram, I would say, for like the last two years. It's called the Shine the Light series. This is also going to turn into the Shine the Light sponsor series, where we take an opportunity to shine the light on somebody that we see working hard in the community, somebody that we might see getting over an addiction in our family. It could be something that you may see as something large scale or something small scale, but at the end of the day, we want to give this person they have flowers. I guess you could say it's the, our way of giving people their flowers where they can smell them and just letting them know that we see you working. Because it doesn't mean that at the end of their journey, it means that they're working still. And we see what they're doing and we want them to know that. So we're going to shine a light on them. So we shine the light on my brother. Yep. So as Buddy described, the Shine, shine the Light Spotlight series um, is us finding people in the community around the world that's doing something grand and almost unbelievable. Um, so my Shine the Spotlight series for this episode is going to be Dylan Gilmer, 
aka Young Dylan. Y'all don't on. know who Young Dylan is. He's a rapper, actor, social media influencer from Annapolis, Maryland. He was first put on the map and discovered by the world when Alan DeGeneres put him on the show. Um, and he also pr premiered on America's Got Talent. Performed um, with Drake. He, yeah, performed with Drake at the, at the game. I mean, if y'all follow Young Dylan, whose Instagram is official Young Dylan, every day he's posting dope stuff and you can see him with any celebrity, right? Um, his biggest, one of his biggest achievements is being the star of the show Tyler Perry's Young Dylan, which is on Nickelodeon. Watch um, it. And that was discovered again from being on the Alan DeGeneres show. Um, he began rapping when he was only six years old. He was rapping, doing videos on YouTube that was shot by his dad, and they became viral. He had a career as a child rapper as a result, and he has made several appearances on Ellen. Um, the talk show host adopted a cheetah in his honor after speeding with Ellen, and he was talking about how he was passionate about wild cats. So the show actually adopted a cheetah because of young Dylan. Um, as a young child, he remembers songs word for word. And his dad, you know, encouraged him to keep going, videotaped him. And to be honest, man, I want to shout out his dad, Damon. Um, I salute you, bro. And I really respect and admire what you do for Dylan and how much you taking his career to the next level by being by his side. That's something I always personally wanted as an artist growing up, you know, to have my parents behind me and supporting me. When in my life, I felt like I had more friends doing that. So mm. shout out to his mom, too, Deandra. Like both of them fully support this guy. And make sure that he's prepped and ready. And he's very smart, very well spoken, get good grades. So, you know, his career, even though it's blossomed and took off, his parents still make sure that school is the number one priority. And if you speak to Dylan, you hear how he articulates himself, you'll see that for yourself. Um, some of the songs that, that Dylan started out with that he became popular was Bryson Tiller's Don't. Um, it drew fans from all over the world to check him out. Uh, what else we got? Rapping Mad Drake songs. Um, I want to just touch on pretty much how fast time moved, bro. Like when we decided to choose him and I started to go look at research, it was 2016 when I think Drake brought him out of the Toronto game. Like 2013, 2014. And I remember me working at DTLR and it was then, like, you know, me, I'm in there rapping songs as we out there working and he would come into the store. Always passionate, always knowing the words, always into it. And just seeing him, what I love most about him is the fact that he still want to be a kid. Mm -hmm. He still, I don't know if he still does, but I know up to apparently last year, he was still playing for Brooklyn Park, youth football program. Um, he was still coming back to do the stuff that every other person his age is doing. Because no matter how successful he becomes, doing songs with Jermaine Dupri. Like, imagine being a young artist and you get a chance to make music with Jermaine Dupri. He don't know who probably Criss Cross was. He might know now because I do believe Dylan is like a historian. I do believe he actually cares about the craft. Like, I seen Jermaine Dupri do an interview and he was just saying, like, radio stations should be pushing this. Like, he's making them songs that people like the Young Philly Goats is making, uh, Too Raw Re. Um, the sound that these young TikTokers and young youth in our neighborhoods is dancing to. You know me, I just did homecoming events. Now this is what they want to hear outside of sexy red ski and mm -hmm. stuff like that. They want to hear these type of songs. So just the fact that Dylan hasn't tried to step outside of himself. He's not talking about guns. Mm -hmm. He's not talking about violence. He's talking about kid stuff, getting girls, shooting shows. That ain't normal kid stuff, shooting shows. Yeah. But the fact that he's eclipsed what maybe anybody has done anybody. in our town, bro. Maybe it's actors from DC and Baltimore, but somebody that young that's on his trajectory and hasn't even hit his plateau, bro, it's like he's more than deserving. The biggest person from our city, in my opinion, older guy that did something grand like Dill was Bill Petaway. Absolutely. Um, Producer. Shout out to Bill Petaway. Legend. I believe they have a movie coming out, documentary. It may be the documentary style or just the reenactment movie movie of uh, Millie Vanilli and Bill Petaway was a part of the start with Kevin Lyles and I don't Kevin know like, that's why I'm, so, I'm so anxious to be able to see this because I want to know the full story behind what happened with Millie Vanilli um, but Bill Petaway was a part of that so Thanks. him and Young Dylan man amazing guys and uh, just to end it off um, Young Dylan you, you brought up TikTok TikTok is actually a song by Dylan um, that he had a challenge out 
um, and also his new song, which is out right now, is called Can We Talk, and he's got a dance challenge going on, so if y'all follow Young Dylan, check out the new Can We Talk song, and make sure you got kids that make TikTok videos, make sure they join along in this challenge, it's actually a cool challenge, nothing crazy like a lot of the challenges we've seen over years. Um, but Dylan, just going back to who he is and what he's accomplished so far, they're in season number four with Tyler Perry's Young Dylan. Um, they just wrapped up season three. Uh, he's hosted a segment with NBA All-Star Weekend. He recently appeared on DTLR Radio. Everywhere. Uh, Spit That Fire Fridays with DJ Quicksilver, the Jennifer Hudson Show. He was at the BET Awards this year, and he did the On the Radar Freestyle, and he was nominated for Young, the Young Star Award. And it is the last day of October today, and I saw that Dill had a dope movement, like how you said, Bud, remember? Yeah. Dill's was called Dill, Dillo October. So Dillo October. Last day of Dillo October, we Shout got to highlight legend. and spotlight the young goat, the young legend, young Dylan. Again, man, we salute you. Uh, what I've seen you accomplish in these little bit of years has been amazing. Um, R.I.P. to Trader Kid. Me and him used to talk all the time in our spare time about how great you would be. And I used to tell Trey, like, no disrespect to you, bro. I know you grinding, but Dylan going to be the first superstar from Annapolis in this Big next facts. generation. Because, I mean, it was just inevitable. He's special, no kids bro. doing what he was doing at the time. And for him to be able to take that to the next level is unprecedented and amazing, bro. It, it doesn't go unnoticed. We salute you, and we hope to get you on the show so you can give us a full account on who you really are. Absolutely, man. So just one more time, man. Shout out to the family. Shout out to the young legend, young Dylan. Mm -hmm. Just getting started. So... We either could choose to run through the last few segments or tell them exactly what the last few segments is. Maybe we do one open minute subject. Mm -hmm. All right, so after the Shine of Light series, we go into open minutes where we pretty much try to pick three topics. We give them five minutes apiece. It could be a hot topic going on in the world, something like Joe Smith, OnlyFans, and his wife. It could be something like the hottest seller album, how everybody treated Drake and all the dogs, and that it was trash. So, um, it's more serious topics like the war in Palestine and Israel, you know, praying for all people. But um, yes, so at the end of the day, what we decided to talk about today, I'm going to give you the choice. We're going to go music or we going with the OnlyFans? Got to go with the OnlyFans, bro. Talk about The only it. reason I want to talk about it because before the Joe Smith situation happened, which we're going to get into, I've been telling everybody about this. This is a conversation <laughs> See the conversation going, going on around the world. I'm seeing brothers <laughs> all around the world in agony. Talk to them, bro. Because they finding their wife has got a hidden OnlyFans page. What's she doing? Showing that cat for a little stack. <laughs> Why is she doing it? Because you ain't paying the rent back. <laughs> so, I mean, why she so should So, that gets it. into the Joe Smith situation, right? If you guys have been in tune with social media and what's going on, retired NBA legend Joe Smith, his wife... University of Maryland alum. ...recently discovered that his wife of I don't know how many years had an OnlyFans page, mm. and he just found out about it. I think the worst part about that is the day that he comes to address her about it, she pulls out her cell phone unknowingly to him and starts recording his frustration that he's talking. And as soon as he ends his, his uh, whole frustration with, fuck that shit or fuck you, she like, hold up. Now he, you know, he finally, he's like, oh, you recording me? She, and she just walks off, <laughs> like literally disrespecting this man, not even paying him no mind, telling the world, us, what's going on in their relationship. So from her words, she says that, it's obviously some financial issues going on in the home. She didn't get specific, but she said that she addressed these issues to Joe, hoping that he had come with a solution. And because he didn't, she took it amongst herself to step back in the game of doing OnlyFans. Oh, she I was in the game prior. Not the OnlyFans. I was going to get to that. Not the OnlyFans <laughs> game, but I'm assuming she was either a stripper or she was selling that cat for real, like a sex worker. Because she says... You knew who I was before you met me. Right. That's a strong statement. That's a very strong statement. He was statement. a little quiet for a while after that. But, you know, just me getting into it um, and my opinion on that. Right. Me personally, I will find that really disrespectful if my wife goes behind my back to do something like that. Man, my, my lady personally have enough communication to where whether it's financial, something we're uncomfortable with, right. we're going to address it. Every bit of it. Every description that we need to get off our chest. Right. So when we go to sleep at the, at the end of the night, we got a solution. We ain't 
And we won't no see no bad feelings. Yeah, 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 no bad feelings, no nothing. So, Joe, you gonna have to make a move, Playboy. Like, uh, not just like Cam and Mace said. Like, it's not even just the the act is already bad. Right? What was going on in the group chats? Joe got homeboys. Yeah. Which one of the ex players is is subscribed to your white page? Oh, Probably shit. saying your wife cat more than you. That's when it start getting wild. You know? Yeah. What's your take on it? All right, I got a minute twenty seven. I'm gonna go into it real quick. <laughs> I feel like it all comes down to communication in your marriage and your relationship. If y'all on one accord, then it's no reason that you should have to sneak a OnlyFans. If she did bring it to him, bring it to the front door, brought it to the table, and he didn't do anything, I guess, in the timetable that she felt necessary to get back into the game, coach, then, you know, it is what it is. For me, I think everything comes down to ego when it comes down to relationships. And if that's your wife and you trust her, then it really ain't no biggie. To me, the trust factor is that you felt like you had to do it behind my back. Then you recorded me about it like it's a joke. Now, at the same time, as a man, you got to have accountability. I don't know what y'all agreement was in this marriage or this relationship, mm -hmm. what you're supposed to provide and hold her down for her not to do this. If this was an agreement to step out the game, all I know is that most dudes can't deal with one work husband. And she probably got a bunch of work husbands because she got the only. So at the end of the day, you know, it can make it tough on a marriage if your marriage has those type of weaknesses in it. So for me in a relationship... I feel like you can work through anything if you love a person enough, but it has to be some type of like understanding and communication. And it ain't for everybody. So I feel like if she's helping take care of the household, get that money. It's 2023, man. You yeah, know, we're supposed to be a team. That's what I'm talking about. So don't lie to me about it. Like I, my homeboy shouldn't be like, oh, you see what Alicia did last Saturday? Like I shouldn't have to find out like that. Yeah. So hopefully she has some type of respect about how she's going about it. But that's that. That is what our uh, open minutes will look like when we go through different topics and discussions. Five quick minutes, how we feel about something, keep it moving, we'll have more to come when it comes to that. So, moving past that, we have reached pretty much the end of our show. That's how everything will come in from our sponsors, spots, to our guest spots, to how we want to go through questions, to the rapid fire questions, to the, you know, the loosely, love to not love, all the way to we didn't get into our inspirational moment message tonight to where we drop gems, but that'll be a part for our guests to drop a gem about that industry. If you're a photographer, what is it to catch the perfect angle? What do you do? How many hours do you prep a set before you go into? For me, it's hosting. A gem for me would be something like work the room. Like know exactly what your purpose is, but when you get there, have leave room for improv. Don't time everything out as a host. Like try to give some type of room for that moment to happen. And um for me tonight, I'll make my moments quick, man. It's a blessing to be alive. Every waking day is a gift. I'm happy to be in the position that I am as a man. I'm growing as a person. Everything around me, the people around me are growing as people. I get a chance to do a podcast with somebody I grew up with in the same neighborhood. Um, it's close by, but living two different probably type of lives, two different type of opportunities. And we both have done what, we, what it takes to get to a point of success, and we fall from done. The reason that we're doing this is because we love to produce art. And to me, this is art. I'm not a drawer. My stick figures is trash. But at the same time, I feel like I could talk to people and inspire people with my actions, with my heart, with my thoughts, with the things that I do on a day-to-day -day basis. So this is Do It For The Love, and this is Eric D. Man's Pop Davis. If you're from Annapolis, you know me as Buddy. Get ready for more. I want to talk to everybody. I want you here. And this is Do It For The Love, man. It's a blessing to be here. We're going to shout out our studio and everything at the end. But I'm just happy for everybody that's been a part of getting to this point. We wanted to drop this on Valentine's Day. It was perfect. Do It For The Love, hearts, self shirts, all of that good stuff. And we just said, you know, why rush something that we think is going to be special? So Sat back, researched other shows. And we're here. Looking so, at different uh, guests. So we got a lot in store for you. It's a blessing, man, to be here. And I just want to say thank you to all the viewers that's going to see this. Like, share, comment. We got more coming, more details on how to interact with us and just do more. That's my moment. And for my moment, for Sal's moment, um, and I feel like these moments should always be from the heart and not planned at all. Um, my moment is parents, tune in, tap in with your kids, man. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a parent of two, boy and a girl, um, and I'm starting to realize now that they becoming preteens that I gotta really, you know, sit down and have conversations with them to see where they at 
as a young teen, what they being exposed to, and just give them my, you know, open opinion and, and love and support behind everything. Um, I feel like over the last couple of weeks with being with my kids, it's been, been moments where it just hit me. I look, whether it's me looking at them, I'm like, damn, they growing up. All right. Daughter wearing makeup now, you know, my <laughs> son texting girls or asking certain questions. So Something could seem so small. And these it, are pivotal it, moments. Yeah, and it seemed like time just went by so fast that I almost missed it. But it, it, it's nothing that you miss. It's, it's hypothetical, you know what I mean? So I just, and I feel like I need to make more effort now to just really tune in with them, make more effort to do things with them um, Why they, before they get too old for me, where they be like, Dad, you know, I'm out right. with friends, and they get into that point. So you don't get these times back. Parents, get to know your kids better. Um, it's a lot of murders and tragic incidents going on, and a lot of people always come to me about my opinion and what I could do, but I honestly draw a blank because I think about the parents, and I, I think like, how do you know, or how do you not know your child is carrying a firearm, or how do you not know your child is having sex unprotected or, you know, whatever that may be. Us as parents, we, whether it feels uncomfortable or not, we need to just ask simple questions. How was your day today? Or if, if you don't know your child and your child's being hiding stuff, you might need to go through their things. Like they live under your roof um, and you going through their things could save a life. You know, you never know if your child may be having thoughts of committing suicide or shooting the school up, you know, if we start to ask these questions and pry, and if you do find something, and just really sit down and ask them why. I wouldn't even just, you know, go crazy on them because that could spiral into other things. But right. ultimately, us as parents, we got to tap in more with our kids, whether that's doing homework with them, inspiring them, supporting them in their sports, whatever that may be. Right. So that's sales moment for the day. Be friendly, Make sure you parent. like, subscribe, do it for the love podcast. Season one, episode one. Yes, man. The Here, Brody. Oh, my God. Yes. My G. Man, shout out to our studio. Shout out to the film team, my videographers, everybody, the cameraman. Listen, man, it's a team effort to put together any type of show, any type of program, any type of festival, whatever you're doing. Nothing is just done by yourself. And if you do it by yourself, at some point in time, you're going to come burnt out. So spread the love. Share the love. We do it for the love. Um, we got more coming with recaps, sponsors. We want you, everybody. So yeah, man, this is it. Episode one, pilot one, do it for the love. D-Man's Pop Davis. Self-spit fire, signing off. Do it for the love, baby. Love.